welcome you to our webinar today, the Illinois Apprentice Network webinar that is sponsored by both um, the Department of Commerce and Economic Opportunity through the Workforce Innovation and Opportunity Act and our other partners such as Adult Ed, Career and Tech Ed, Voc Rehab, and Department of Employment Security. I'm going to kind of set the stage for um, how we got to uh, this place of creating the Apprentice Networks. I think everyone on the call is very familiar with what's been going on the last few years just around um, apprenticeships in general and creating new opportunities for apprenticeships in non-traditional sectors, as well as just ramping up efforts uh, it, around apprentices in general. But David, if you could adjust the slide, that'd be great. So back in January, when Governor Pritzker um, took office, he issued an executive order, which is 2019-3, where he directed the department to look at how we could improve industry targeting, as well as looking at how we can align workforce services more strategically, especially with disenfranchised populations and in rural communities as well as urban communities. So our first step was because work, this workforce development, is, as we know, is far greater and larger than just um, the Department of Commerce. So we convened all of our WIOA partners and really talked about what, is, what would this executive order look like and how could we continue and expand on our current efforts for aligning work, education workforce and economic development. So what we came up with are three basic action areas. And I'll talk about those in more detail in just a moment, but then from there we created the strategies and then did proposed action steps. We really felt like, and the governor of course approved, that we were really strengthening our commitment to workforce development and, and job creation. So once we completed that report and submitted it to the governor on, four, on April 14th, uh, we, he then made uh, an announcement about us looking at how do we expand business-led apprenticeships and working with Aon in the Chicago Apprentice Network to do that. And David, can you uh, go to the next slide, please, slide three. So our, these are our three priority areas, and you'll see that they really do align nicely with the work that we're doing as a state around apprenticeships, which is looking at how we unite workforce development partners around regional cluster strategies. And we're gonna not only identify what those high impact ones are based on what we're currently doing through WIOA, through Career and Tech Ed, um, through our economic development plans, but we're, we're gonna take that a next step and and really think about how can we align not only methodology, but terminology across those systems so that whether I'm in the economic development space or the education space, if I say a regional cluster, then it's gonna mean the same, the same thing to the folks that are talking about it. We're also looking at how are we gonna prepare our workers for careers and not just jobs. One of the things that we have done as a state is created a career pathways dictionary where the education, workforce, and economic development systems came together and said, here's what we're going to say, here's how we're going to define a career pathway, and here are the supporting terminologies around that career pathway. We also really want to look at how can we address the barriers that prevent individuals from achieving successful employment, and not just you know, through supportive service type activities, but also how do we incorporate work-based learning into that, which is where we came um, into the conversations and really thought about how do we expand the apprentice network and utilizing the great um, business-led model that Chicago Apprentice Network does. Then our last one was how do we connect job seekers with employers? So a couple of the things that we're thinking about for priorities for that is, you know, how do we reduce the time from credential to employment? How do we integrate work-based learning into more opportunities for job seekers? So those are our three action priority areas. And I think, too, I'm going to mention here that one of the things um, that just recently happened, for those of you that have been following closely, 
the General Assembly session that just got over is the governor and the General Assembly really put in a, a great importance on apprenticeships and there's going to be several uh, pieces of legislation that the governor is going to sign that will become law. For example, one is an apprentice tax credit. Um, so be looking for that, but I think, you know, as we move forward, we're really, really looking at how to engage apprenticeships more strategically. Can you flip the slide, David, please? Thanks. I thought I wanted to remind us, our Illinois Workforce Innovation Board has an apprenticeship committee, and that board established four priorities. And again, it works nicely with and very much dovetails into the governor's executive order, but looking at how we're going to integrate apprenticeship into workforce development. How are we going to support the development of those apprenticeship programs as we expand and scale up? And then what will we do around recruitment and making sure that you know we're recruiting the entire base and, and including those disenfranchised populations and looking at equity and how do we establish equity goals to make sure that we're meeting those and then really looking at how we build capacity to make it easier to start apprenticeship programs so i say those two things to kind of set the context for where we're going to go with this we do have a preliminary sketch of um, a timeline of what we want to do as a next step. And David, if you could, oh great, you already did that. So moving forward, we are going to be conducting additional webinars to introduce um, our various workforce development partners and education professionals on how we're going to support employers as these employer-led networks get started. And I really want to stress that employer-led network um, and really that we as workforce, those of us that are on here as workforce and ed professionals and education professionals, we really want to be a support to those businesses. Then for the month of July, we're actually going to start planning relatively quickly uh, some in-person sections around the state so, so that, and Dan has graciously uh, offered to participate in those roundtable discussions where we're going to convene businesses to really talk about this model and how they can take this model back and implement it regionally. And then throughout just the rest of the year, we're going to just be looking at how do we, you know, scale up our partnerships um, and how do we really expand these networks and create more opportunities for apprentices in, in the state of Illinois. So with that, I would like to turn this over to Dan Sirota from Aon. And Dan, I will let you introduce yourself. Well, well, thanks, Lisa. I hope you can hear me. Um, thanks for giving me the time to, to speak today a little bit about what's going on here in Chicago, but also um, what we've done at Aon, um, which I think is a very innovative way of thinking on, uh oh, I lost the slides. Um, uh oh, David. Okay. Did everyone see him? Lisa? Yes, I can see it. Okay. All right, great. Um, going back to my point. So talking about the, you know, the innovative solution that I think as a corporation Aon took around a workforce problem that we were dealing with here in Chicago. Um, so let me try to change up. Oh, there we go. Sorry. There we go. Okay, so why did Aon invest in their apprentice program? So to give everyone a little bit of a high level about our program, um, in 2017, um, Aon started an apprenticeship program with 25 individuals coming into our firm in three different settings of insurance, IT, and human resources. We had a really big problem in those roles for our entry level positions. Retention was a very big issue where we would lose people after six months of them being at our firm and they would go to a different firm and then we would hit the job board again. And then the managers would want someone to fill that job. So one of the solutions that we were really focused on as a firm, which is a very common model in the UK, uh, w was apprenticeship. And how do we bring it from the UK model, which in financial services is extremely popular, 
to Chicago uh, in a different light. Zurich uh, was a year ahead of us, and they took their model that they had in Switzerland and brought it here. And we wanted to figure out a way to also do the same thing in Chicago. We also had a partnership with city colleges here in Chicago. And one of the things that we've always done with city colleges is we would bring in their interns. But from that, never really went anywhere. Um, you know, they would come for three to four to five months, and then they would leave. And then we would talk, teach them all about Aon, but wouldn't keep them long term. So we were looking for a solution where we would have these individuals for a longer period of time, which the Aon program is two years long. But then we would also be able to use this as a way to, to diversify our pool of individuals coming into our firm. And from this, um, we, going to the next slide, really wanted to shape the way we looked at our program as a two-year program um, at Aon. Um, they're guaranteed a job. We wanted to try to keep these individuals to work at our firm long term and create this as a long term solution coming in. In partnership with city colleges, you know, one of the big things is they've never done this before. So really taking this model, looking at the curriculum and really shaping it to the way that we want to be able to have our employees, which i.e. these apprentices, be a part of our firm and really be a part of the culture. Because we thought that having these people stay within Aon in a longer term basis is only going to give them a career path to continue to grow within our firm. And then taking a step back, you know, looking at IT, insurance, and HR, we also looked at what actually needed a four year degree. We also, you know, when you become in the habit of always hiring from the same top 10 universities or 20 universities across the country, you lose a little bit of that hold. And how do you pick up a new talent pool with definitely some qualified individuals to being able to bring them back within their company? One of my executives at Aon always says, you know, no one gets fired from hiring someone from Notre Dame. But why can't we get in the habit of looking at the community college space as a potential talent pool for our employers? Take off that four year degree requirement and make it where these individuals can then come into our firm for a longer term period. So we did that. Um, our apprenticeship program, as I stated, is a two year program. The individuals of our program get full time compensation, so they get a salary. They get employee benefits within our firm. <laughs> we pay for their tuition. We pay for their books. Uh, the three kind of sub tracks, like I said, insurance, HR, and technology, um, we have a partnership also with Harper, which is the same one as Zurich um, in Schaumburg. We have a Lincolnshire office where we have about five apprentices a year, and that's where they go. And we're also certified with the Department of Labor um, in all three of those tracks. Um, you know, so far, Aon has done this program for three years. We had our first graduating class um, that just took hold in 2018 of December, uh, we had 23 that graduated and they're full-time within our company now, within our business. And I'm gonna go to the next slide. You know, some of the promatic stuff that takes place within the program, um, you know, Aon has a partnership with an organization called One Million Degrees. And I call them, you know, the, the mortar within a brick. They're the ones that kind of hold everything together to make sure all the trains run on time. So they're in communications with the manager, they're in communications with the school, and they're in communications with Aon in general, making sure the apprentice has the support they need to be successful. Um, we do it where we found that mentorship is a very important part to this. You have to have someone to be able to mentor these individuals because of a lot of these individuals that are coming here never has worked in a corporate environment before. So we want to make sure that they are very much integrated, engaged, and willing to be a part of this program long term. Engagement is key. We do a two-day orientation session 
in the beginning of each cohort, which is in January of the years. <coughs> so we just had our third cohort starting January 19, and we'll have another cohort starting January of 2020. And I'll be talking a little bit about the recruitment side of that as well. So the recruitment timeline and overview, you know, what type of candidates do we look for? So I think the biggest thing here is when we first started total risk, we didn't know who we were going to get, but we were so excited and happy for what we were able to come up with. <coughs> we found that finding someone with a little bit of some experience made sense for us within our firm. We wanted them to have a little bit of some managerial and or a job um, to being able to fill the void. I talk about an individual all the time and I think his story continues to grow within our firm. His name is Victor. And, you know, he was someone that worked at McDonald's and Flippin' Burgers, was a bellman at the Holiday Inn, has a daughter and a wife, um, has a mortgage in the city, and was also going to school at the same time joined us in cohort one, you know, an 18 year old coming into our program, um, graduated this last upcoming year and is now going to be in line to become an actuary and is also going, you know, part time at Roosevelt while still working at Aon. And, you know, those are the type of individuals we look for, which are individuals that are hungry and want to be there, want to learn, want to be engaged, and want to grow their career uh, for the long-term haul. Um, you know, we emphasize during our orientation sessions to ask questions, to network, to grow, um, and to really be a part of the fold because we have found that that creates that mindset that they want to be able to keep learning and keep being engaged. Because I will tell you, as an Aon employee, I still don't know every single part of our business because it's so big. And if you don't ask questions and you don't get in, it creates a little bit of harder once you get into the corporate fold. But our apprentices are on top of it, they're hardworking, uh, and they continue to grow themselves long-term. You know, the other big part I wanted to make sure I walk through, sorry for that technical, there we go, uh, is the recruitment process of how we do it. Um, every one of our employers that are part of the Chicago Apprentice Network are extremely different. Um, we have employers that start recruitment in the summer, which I'll kind of talk about later on, start in the fall. You know, from Aon's perspective, we wanted to start in January of each year. The budget time, that made sense for us in our business. And, you know, it worked out for the school year to being able to, to do that as well. So we start our apprentice recruitment in August. And how we do that is with partnership with city colleges. But also we looked at some of our nonprofit partners in the city. Um, if they have any talented individuals that they have, you know, we look to promote, we look to grow. You know, I think the second year we did this, we had 350 applicants for 25 positions. So from that, it was a great growth and a great opportunity from there. We do a first round assessment. We do a digital interview. Um, online, we ask questions, they read, you know, they're able to answer it via video um, to get a sense. We also confirm if they're college ready. We want to make sure these individuals have their college ready uh, and, and are able to go to college as part of the program is, you know, working and going to school at the same time. So we found that that is an important part of it. Oh, skip the slides. Um, and we do a final round of interviews in October and November. So we do a day um, where they actually come to Aon, um, they meet some of the employees, they meet some of the managers, and they're actually soft skill networking, really meeting individuals, seeing what skill sets these individuals have, but also kind of the, the way they act, the way leadership acts, and, and the way they come out as individuals. And then, you know, 2019 was the last one. Um, they're able to begin and be part of the organization through the two-day orientation, and they start school, you know, January. I think it's the second week in January, usually, they begin school. Um, you know, one of the biggest things that I want to make sure I emphasize is 
kind of the way that we did it is very unique. So the apprentices that are very much in, enacted within our program, they are working and going to school at the same time, Monday through Friday. So if they have about 12 credit hours, 10 to 12 credit hours, they're gonna be working 28 to 30 hours a week. So it's all gonna add up to 40 as full-time colleagues. But when they have class during the day or whenever they are, they go to class. And we wanna make sure that our apprentices are able to go to school and work at the same time because a lot of the curriculum that we enacted is going to help them in the workplace. Um, and it's gonna help them being able to navigate and be engaged. And you know, I was talking to an apprentice and something that they did in, in a part of the insurance stuff, they learned in their accounting class and they learned in their different aspects because that's helping them kind of learn what they're doing in school to then do what they're gonna be doing in the workplace, which I think is very important um, and something that we have found to be you know, very successful so far within our programs. So Lisa, I, I am on to the next, you know, talking about the Apprentice Network. Do we want to do a couple Q&A on the Aon, or do you want me to keep going, or what's helpful? Uh, I think that would be great if you want okay. to, if folks would like to uh, ask a question, either in the chat pod or unmute themselves. David, hey, David, they can unmute themselves, right? Uh, I don't believe so, but we can right, unmute them. If there's okay. Yeah, if they raise their hand, we can unmute them. Can you hear me? Now we're getting some background noise. Okay. Okay. So we don't need it for now. So Lisa, if there's a couple in the chat box, do you want to just read those off and I can answer them? Yeah. So there was one that was asking about who um, registered you guys as an apprenticeship with DOL. Was it you or was it the community college that got the Yeah. Status? No. Great question. So we actually did the registration. Um, it was extremely easy. The Department of Labor actually um, actually provided us with a consultant um, that actually helped us with a little bit of the forms. And what I tell people is, um, you know, I have our apprentice forms all lined up and ready to go, and I'm happy to share it with anybody to make it easy for them. Um, we'll go into a little bit more detail on the registration part towards the playbook and through the Chicago Apprentice Network stuff that I'll get into. But yeah, um, for us, it was something that the Department of Labor provided to us. Um, we found it to be easy, um, didn't take too much time, and uh, yeah, it, it worked out for us great. So we have another question that's asking how many total apprentices has Aon had and, or what's your average per year? Yeah, so it's 25 per year. Great question. Um, we, we did it in... Oh, are we able to mute that, David, that line? Sorry. Yes, hang on one second. Sorry. No, that's okay. I'm glad you did it. Everybody should mute. <clears throat> Are we good to go, David? Yeah, it looks like we're good to go now. Okay. Yeah, so 25, 25 per year is kind of how we do it. We usually have 20 in Chicago and five in Lincolnshire. Um, and we will continue to do it for next year as well. Um, you know, in total, we've had 75 totally have come through the program. And like I said, we had 22 uh, that graduated uh, in 2018. So we have another question. Uh, did the students take classes prior to starting the program? Follow-up is, was the required list of classes they needed to take prior to starting to show capability? So, yes, some of them did. Um, and that's a very good question. So we've actually had a couple of the apprentices that came from four-year universities um, and actually came back home. Um, they were from Chicago. and some of their classes actually transferred in through our curriculum of some of the gen ed basic classes. Um, from there, um, you know, some of most of the cohort kind of does classes together and, and kind of, you know, goes through the program. 
if there was apprentices that had credits, um, we had no problem with that. We would just tell them that they would be working more hours um, and being part of work long more. So let's say an apprentice, maybe they have three classes done uh, out of the first semester. Um, so they only had three credits, that's fine. Um, we wanted to make sure um, that they, you know, we're not wasting their time by taking those classes over again. We wanna make sure that they're getting the most out of it, um, you know, to being able to get at the end their associate's degree, which they do get at the end of the two years. Lisa, any, do you want me to do a couple more? Oh yeah, I sorry, I can't put you on mute because I coughed. So sorry. Um, we have another question that is, what's been the biggest challenge in starting the apprenticeship program at Aon? Yeah, great question. Um, I, I think our biggest challenge was how do we do it? Um, and in the beginning, getting managers educated um, to being able to understand the type of person that's going to be part of their team. Um, it took time. It took a lot of preparation. But, you know, one of the things that I do tell employers is if you have leadership buy-in and you have the investment in place, it will be a success for you because your managers will appreciate somebody that's going to be willing, hardworking to come into the firm and bust their butt um, and really work hard. Um, you know, the apprentices that we have at Aon, you know, come in with just some hunger and they want to be there and they want to be engaged. And, you know, from our perspective, it's changed our culture and kind of the way that we look at hiring um, and more and more employers are been getting engaged, which I'll talk about, which is just changing the way Chicago is looking at the future of work. Right, we so, have, have a few more questions here, and then um, we can yep. move on. So can you explain in greater detail one million degrees role in the apprenticeship program, and is that partnership officially between Harper and City Colleges of Chicago? So that partnership is actually between Aon and one million degrees. Um, one million degrees is also in city colleges and in the community college space. Um, and everybody kind of uses one million degrees in a different way for our purposes. And I'll go, I'll, I'll talk about that too, you know, towards my chart of Chicago Apprentice Network. We wanted to make sure we had somebody to being able to get the personal side of the apprentice. Really talk to them in the beginning of the program about their commute into the office, about how things are going at home, about how it is the transition and being engaged in the workplace, and about being very much intentional in making sure that the school to work aspect is going well. And we wanted to make sure that that was very successful because if that's successful, you know, the managers can handle everything else with providing them work, providing them feedback, and et cetera. And we wanted to make sure that soft skill side of it was very much done um, because as a company, we didn't have that type of individual within our firm. Um, this question is, what were some of the first assignments these apprentices were assigned and were they capable? So yes and yes, capable and, and you know, assignments that they had, just like any other individual, it's learning about the firm. Um, it's learning about their role and kind of how to, right? And a lot of them in the beginning were very much shadowing and being very much learning how to be able to do things. And I use the example of, you know, we have IT apprentices that work at Aon, and we actually have an IT desk, uh, it's like a genius bar within our firm. So it's on the seventh floor of Aon, and apprentices sit there and they help colleagues fix their computers, but also, you know, troubleshoot any other things they have. And, you know, to figure out all the troubleshooting problems with all of our systems and everything else, it takes time. But it's also kind of learning about, you know, the job and how to innovate, but also to be proactive, right? And to be able to think of new solutions and new ways to fix things. And that's kind of the way, the, those were kind of the first steps. But it's also, you know, anytime you go into a new company, you're learning about the firm. You're learning about your job and you're learning about how to get engaged and how to talk to people. And that's kind of what we did. Uh, another question is, in 
in the case of those that already had classes, do they get an increased wage for possibly being a second year apprentice? Increased wage between. So, so no. So we, so we hire, you know, when we're doing our program, we look for individuals that have been, you know, 18 to 25 indiv year olds that have kind of either a started into the track of being part of um, the city colleges in the beginning, or B, they have some credits that are being enacted, right? So the biggest part that we wanted to make sure is they came together as a cohort moving forward. We found that the cohort model makes a lot of sense because they create a bond with each other. They also help with each other and they grow. Now, some of the other programs that I'll hint on and communicate with you, they do do that. And they do pick up apprentices at different parts of their city college journey, but also their college journey, um, where it's not the same as Aon, but they are registered or they're a part of that network um, that do it in different phases. But for our program and kind of the way that we've been doing it, it's either kind of at the beginning or some credits that they may have gotten through transfer. They went to college, didn't work out. They took a break, then they came in or whatever that may be. Um, but that's kind of the way that we've done our program. Um, we have another question around describing your experience with working with the colleges. Yeah. So we, we in, in the beginning, I think it was a whole new, it was a new ball game for them. They really didn't know how to handle this. Um, and it took time. Um, I think over time it, it has gone to becoming a great relationship. Um, they added a little bit of some more staff, which Matt will actually talk about, about the Apprenticeship 2020 side of this. Um, that actually helped, you know, them to be able to function and being able to support a lot of our employers that we've been sending their way, um, as you can imagine. Um, and the partnership has been great. I think there is always room for improvements. Um, but overall, I think, you know, City Colleges has done a fantastic job of creating this, you know, career pathway uh, to make it successful within their organization. All right, we have three final questions and then we can move on to the yeah, That'd be great. Okay, it appears that Aon is the driving factor in getting that many people interested. What role does the community college play in recruiting people interested in the program? Yeah, and, and I think we'll talk about that a little bit more on the Chicago Apprentice Network front, but um, I definitely think you know, it's showing case studies, it's showing examples, and it's showing how to, right? And really talking to an employer about what is your business case? What are you struggling with? And how can you solve that by using models that are out there um, that can really help? And really actually, you know, the biggest thing that I always tell people is what really needs a four-year degree or what a two-year degree with a little education can come and fill that job? And are you hitting that job board over and over again for that same position? Maybe it's time to take a step back and evaluate and really see what the opportunity is. And part of city or you know the colleges that are out there, that could be a good way to really take a step in and really help the employer really navigate that space um, and really showcase that. And I think that's one of the things that the Chicago Apprentice Network is trying to, to help employers see is to really look in that type of lens of having that business case and that business issue um, to really solve a problem that they may be facing. Uh, the next question is, what type of IT jobs is Aon recruiting for? Is it software development, cybersecurity? So yeah, so in the beginning, it was really IT support. Um, that was one of the needs that we had from the business. We lost a lot of people that came from four-year degrees, and that was something that we found a problem. Um, you know, the two other factor IT jobs that we're looking in and been hiring, network support. Don't ask me to go into much detail than that. I know it's called network support. It's making sure the network is up and running and everything is good there. Um, and then we are looking to add cybersecurity um, as kind of the next phase. Um, Aon does cybersecurity business um, overall, and that is something that is a growing industry, as probably most on the phone knows, and it's something that we are going to be looking to try to add cyber roles um, within our firm going into 2020. 
And our last question is, what is Aon's annual cost to support this program? Sure. So uh, how, I, how I phrase it out is we pay a salary, you pay a salary, you pay for school, and I bucket that with one million degrees, and we also pay for their benefits. Um, so I always tell people the package is about 50K per apprentice um, is kind of how we average that out. Um, it, from our perspective, it gets charged back to each of our business units within our firm. So if there's an IT apprentice, it gets charged to the IT apprentice, you know, the IT group within our firm. The insurance gets charged to that insurance group. The HR gets in charge to HR. But that's kind of the overall flow of that's how much it costs per apprentice um, per 25. So that's kind of how it works. Any other questions? Um, we don't Sir, have can I keep plugging? Can I keep plugging through? Go ahead and plug on. All right. Well, now the fun stuff that, uh, is something that I will tell you, it has been a fun project for me. Um, it has been a really joy of my job, I would say. Um, and really something that really kind of brings a, a spark to my day that we've been, we've been growing so much interest. So from this and kind of what you've heard from us as the apprentice program here at Aon, we then took the next step after, you know, some conversations with some of our partners with Accenture and Zurich um, to start a network really grow within each other and spread the word about how we are looking at workforce. One, this is a great thing for the apprentices because the more employers that know about it, the better chance that if they go to a different employer and say they're part of the Aon Apprenticeship Program or the Zurich Apprenticeship Program or the Accenture Apprenticeship Program, it helps them long-term. Um, the second phase of this and the importance is the community aspect, I think, is important to be able to help your community colleges wherever you are. Um, and it was something that we as a firm wanted to be more engaged. So did Accenture and so did Zurich. And, you know, the second part is it's leveraging the city, getting more career oriented, oriented jobs to people that maybe didn't have that opportunity to be able to have one. Um, so in 2017, we created the Chicago Apprentice Network. Um, Co-founders, as I said, Zurich, Accenture, and Aon, um, with the goal of, by the end of 2020, um, getting to 1,000 apprenticeships across Chicagoland and really growing this model moving forward. Um, you know, some of the ways that we have done that, um, we've created last year a playbook uh, for employers to be able to take about, I think it's like up to 67 pages, um, wasn't a, a short project, to really tell you, you know, one to 50, how did, how, did, how did we do it as employers? How did we, you know, as employers look at this as a way to being able to create a program? And we want it to be shorter for the employers that are around, right? For Aon, it took about six months. With everyone's buy-in and everything else going on, it took about six months. For Accenture, it took four you know, Zurich, it probably took longer. I couldn't tell you the exact amount. But how can we, how could you as employers that are out there, the employers that you partner with, do it in four weeks, do it in five weeks, and really, you know, take it step by step and get that buy-in early on uh, to really just grow the pie and really grow it moving forward. So that's the playbook. And I'll show it as an example for folks so they can kind of see the table of context of kind of what's in there. Uh, to being able to better talk about it. And then the quarterly networking events, which I think, you know, is one of my favorite parts about it. And what we've done is really make it about the apprentices, but also the interested employers. So for us, these quarterly networking events are being held at different locations across the city and different employers. So the first time we did it, it was held at Accenture. The second time we did it, second quarter of 2018, it was held at Zurich. Then it was held at Aon. Then it was held at McDonald's. Then it was held at some of our other partners that we have part of the network. And the goal is to not only, you know, promote the great work that's going on and really talk about some new employers that are in the room, but to get interest from other employers to see and meet the apprentices themselves. I will tell you, 
honestly, I could introduce you to any of my apprentices. I would not be afraid for them to say something stupid or crazy because they are that good. These individuals are hardworking, they're motivated, and they're well-liked, and they come to the apprentice networking events, and they're the ones selling it, not me, because they're the ones that you look at them and you say, oh, I can hire that individual. And I will tell you, I have to tell employers, like, you can't steal my apprentices. Like, that's not part of the rules. Um, because they are very, very good, very hardworking. And I think the other thing is important is they're creating a network for themselves. Um, you know, when you're an apprentice, you're coming into a job, you don't, or a career, you don't know anybody. And how do you spread your network to meet other people in other companies that are doing a similar path to you? Um, and that's something that, you know, when you think of the apprentice program, it's, it's three stools, right? It's the career, it's the, it, it's the school, and it's the network. And that's how you keep it standing up because you want to keep growing yourself personally. You want to be able to learn how to do your elevator pitch and talk about yourself and be engaged and not be afraid to go talk to somebody. And that's kind of the goal of these networking events. And we have found that they are extremely successful and I think every time we get more and more people, um, the last one we had was at Rush University Hospital here in Chicago. Um, we were very focused industry-wise on the hospitals, um, getting more hospitals engaged and looking at this as a model for them. Rush has been a great leader and someone that has been a great partner in this. And, you know, something that is, it's just been successful so far. Um, the next one is going to be July 31st at J.P. Morgan Chase. Um, and it's something that, you know, from the network standpoint is something that we're going to leverage this for banks and really start promoting this to the banking industry and really get out there um, and grow it moving forward. Sharing best practices, you know, you know, as employers, as partners, we really want this to be employer led. Um, when you hear it from one of your employer partners, it clicks. It's one of those things that's like, oh, I dealt with that, too. Um, so we have a lot of our HR leaders and teams actually discussing their promatic stuff about their programs. Um, one of my HR partners talks to an employer all the time um, about the success of ours, but also how to help them um, and really try to get them to understand why this is so important. Um, and then industry examples, we want to share as many as we can. Like I said, using Rush as an example to really promote the hospitals, using JPMC to really promote the banking industry and how they're doing it and others to really grow this pie um, is the only way um, you're really going to continue the growth moving forward of these types of networks. And, you know, the Chicago Apprentice Network right now, we're at 25 companies. We actually just added two last week, which is great, um, with 435 apprentice roles that are committed. Um, we're going to get to 1,000. No doubters here. Um, we're going to keep growing. We've noticed that a lot of our employer partners they do the test run of like five or six, and then the next year they want to do 30 or 40 um, because it's been such a success, and it's, it's one of those things that it's changing the way they're hiring for the future. So if I go to the next slide, um, I think one of the other things is the momentum that we've gotten. Um, a lot of press, a lot of events, a lot of everything, and it's been keeping me busy, as you can imagine. Um, J.B. Pritzker, or Governor Pritzker, uh, as Lisa said, came and talked about the big report that they did, but also about our program. Um, on the bottom right, that's Governor Pritzker and Rahm Emanuel um, really hitting on the importance of the Apprentice Network and what we're doing. Uh, the young man that's standing there, his name is Ed Richardson, and is actually part of our reinsurance group. And I will tell you, he is smarter than a bunch of our reinsurance guys to the fact that he can actually explain reinsurance. Um, which I will tell you, if anyone can explain it, I'd be very impressed. Um, he's been with Aon for two years and is, you know, now killing it in the reinsurance game, which kudos to him. Uh, and he's doing a really good job. Uh, Penny Pritzker in the A2020 stuff has been growing. Um, a lot of momentum there. And Matt Bruce just joined me and he'll talk about that. Uh, and then we've also been doing a lot of promotion in Washington, <clears throat> D.C., uh, talking about this once they're, you know, they're really discussing the higher education bill. And about expansion of apprenticeship. So Bridget Gaynor, who's my boss, um, was there uh, la two months ago um, testifying in front of Congress and really talking about what's going on in Chicago uh, and the growth of the city. 
Um, so this is the, the playbook that I hinted on. And if I can find my mouse, I will click on. I hope this works. Can everyone still see this, Lisa? Can you see it? Yes, we can. Awesome. All right. Cool. So I think one of the hey, coolest things. Is, I'm ooh, sorry, Dan. We did have a question just real quick. Okay. Did you start the network before or after you took in apprentices? So after, yeah. So we started it in August of 20, 2017. Um, you know, I think we had to make sure it worked uh, first and, and really the buy-in uh, and make sure our program ran smoothly. And so did Zurich and so did uh, Accenture's. And that's when we started the network in 2017. Okay. Um, so this is, this. I wanted to make sure I showed you a little bit of the playbook because I do think it's important for folks to, to really get a sense of what's in there. Um, we talk a little bit about what is an apprentice, why apprenticeship, how to get started in the beginning phase, jumpstart your program, how to develop your priorities. You got to confirm your executive sponsors and learn from us, learn from existing models that are out there. You know, creating those job descriptions, the locations of where those jobs are, where they're sitting, who their manager is, the overall flow, you know, the programmatic side, which I talked about. We're finding your partnership and then looking to try to join a network or join a company or joining that commitment to then growing the pie, which is, you know, the whole point, I think, of the Illinois Apprentice Network is to really get this to become employer led, but getting the workforce development organizations, community colleges, all engaged, all ready to go for, you know, the future growth of the model. Um, and I encourage you, um, if you go, uh-oh, you know what, I remember the page. Hold on one second. Page 56 or 57, let's see. Nope, 57 or 58. Hold on. Sorry. No, nope, I'm off again. To really look at some of these stories, too, of the type of apprentices that have come through, um, they're, it's really remarkable. And it's something that, you know, employers, you know, they want to hear. And they want to hear how these people are being able to get jobs. Both of these guys are now full-time employees within Aon. You know, the funny thing about Stephanie, um, I actually knew her when I joined AR on my first day because I actually met her at the Starbucks in our building. Um, she was actually working at Starbucks, and one of the managers saw her, talked about the apprentice program. She left Starbucks um, and actually came to Aon and uh, is part of the apprentice team, is actually part of our marketing team on the insurance side. So it's like one, it's a small world. And it's one of those things that, you know, the program um, is getting a lot of attention now. And I think, you know, it's one of those things that we're seeing a lot of our employees keep promoting and growing, et cetera, um, to being able to push it forward, which is exciting to see. And I, and at least I'm assuming we'll send this out to the group, but yeah. I think it's important for you to review and ask questions. If there are questions that you have, dan.throat.aon.com. I'm able to answer them and be engaged because we want this to grow and we want employers to see it. Um, Mike Chiapetta, who's at Accenture, uh, is also a resource. I'm happy to share that. And any of our employer companies are willing to be engaged and help share because they want to see this grow as well, um, which is important to see. Um, hey, Dan, sorry, we have a couple of questions if you want to take uh -oh. them down. Sure, why not? Let's do okay. it. Um, yeah. So, oh, sorry, about four came in, so I got to back up. What is the benefit of having a network and why increase your competition for great employees? So that's a great question. Um, I, I think the importance of having a network, as I said, it, it's good for the apprentices, but it's also good for employers to make their programs better. And especially with new programs like this, we want to make it where they're high quality and successful. And that was kind of the reasons why we wanted to make sure we created a network together. Um, I think there are many talented individuals across the city of Chicago um, at all of our community college partners that are probably on the phone today. And I think changing the way we look at talent takes time. And I think it's one of those things that we have found that we didn't think this would become this. And we will continue to still grow but we're going to also look at different ways to hire talent, too. Um, and we want to try to get as many community college students more jobs as possible um, to be able to get them more engaged. And to also look at this as an opportunity for individuals that maybe can't afford college. 
um, maybe at that point where, you know, they don't want to take out as much debt and as much out. And this is a different career pathway for them. They're getting into the ground, into an organization early where they can create a career path for themselves moving forward. And I think this network helps solidify that and makes it high quality. So that's how I'd answer that. What's the starting salary for apprentices at Aon? Um, so it ranges depending on role. Um, so it's between 34 to 37 a year. And like I said, annually, it's the 50K uh, per our business is kind of how we added it up. Um, but we also follow Department of Labor registered roles. So there is a raise increase um, every six months. And also we do, uh, you know, an annual, like a six month review. Um, as well to make sure everything's going well. And if they want to do something different or be engaged, we want to make sure we give them that option and understanding moving forward. So just a couple more questions. Is there any effort underway to connect these apprenticeship programs to the pre-apprenticeship slash high school level? So, yeah. so Matt just gave me a smile. Yes, um, I, I think there is. I think we're a little bit of ways. Um, I, I'm a, I don't know if uh, the thing went off yet, but um, there is a youth apprenticeship side that is going to get more up in the ground in the city uh, looking towards the future. And I think the Chicago Apprentice Network and other key partners will have a stake at the table to help try to connect the dots uh, and really be engaged there um, moving forward. Uh, as, as most of these programs, it's not a sprint, it's a marathon. Um, we're, we're not looking to you know, rush this. We want to make sure it's successful and works and is there for the long haul. So I definitely think that connecting the dots is going to be key, especially for all the employer partners that are part of the network. That's something that they want to see as well. Okay. These are some really great questions. So, that, and there's uh, just two more. Um, okay. And then, Lisa, and then I'll go, I think that my important slide is the next one. So I want to make you sure. You know I what? Do. And I bet your important slide is going to answer these uh, last three questions because they're so, around um, how you get employers engaged. Okay. Well, um, then let's go to that if we yep. can, and then we can come back. Yep, um, and then I want to make sure, you know, Matt has some time to talk about A2020. Um, so this may look really confusing, but it's not. Um, you know, one of the things that we wanted to set the stage on is how do we do it? Kind of what's the flow chart? What's the scenario? And how do we make this work, right? So as you can imagine, the first step, build awareness, grow the network, really have folks understand what it means, what it's going on. And really these networking events really open the door for employers to ask questions, read the playbook, um, and also be engaged. So for example, if an employer is interested in apprenticeship, they would most likely call myself, Mike Chiapetta, or one of our employer partners. From there, we would give them kind of a scenario of what apprenticeship is, what we're doing at each of our employers. And as you guys on the phone probably can tell, I've done this spiel a good amount of times. Um, and then from there, figure out kind of the next step. If they're not interested in what we're doing, or if they're not interested and they're not sure they're interested in the timing and everything else there, we try to introduce them to maybe a nonprofit or another partner that may get them interested or may get them engaged or may help them with a certain business case that they may need or a certain business problem. So from there, I named a couple here, Genesis Works, One Million Degrees, Skills for Chicagoland's Future, Year Up, IC Stars. There's many more that are out there you know, these are some that we partner with and work with. And for us, we want to make sure that we're setting the stage for these companies to then help connect dots, right? For Aon, 1 million degrees was a great leveraging point for us because we needed that personal soft skill side handled. For other employers, they may have interest and needs in the recruitment side. So they may go to Skills for Chicagoland's Future as a pipeline for technology needs or a technology recruitment side. They may go to IC Stars, Genesis Works, Year Up, you name it. And, and, and that's kind of where we want to go. And we're not picking favorites. I think it's one of those things that we want to make sure we're connecting the dots for the employers to find the right need to help their business case and their business issue. And then kind of the next underneath that, if you look at the long line, we connect them to the college. Right. So Paul Thompson is a great research at City Colleges. Harper is a great resource with Dr. Professor Lake um, and Lake College of Lake County 
Uh, just got a new president and I've connected a couple there where I think there's going to be some great opportunities there, but just as an example, right? Um, and then from there, they help with curriculum. They help with timing. They help with the flow. They help with everything to really get them to really understand kind of what's there, what's next, but also get input from us as the employer because we want to be as helpful as possible too. So if an employer goes there, has questions, you know, the employer companies are all willing to engage depending on industry, depending on expertise to really help and kind of tie it all in a bow. And then from there, it's six, right? It's the students. It's tying that in. How many do you want to recruit? What is the timing? What is the job description? What is the role? Where is that all coming in? And where is that flowing into this chart and, and kind of this next stream, right? And really connecting it there. And then you, you pitch it back over to the employer. Um, they're the ones that are going to implement the program. They're the ones that are going to own it. Um, they're the ones that are going to kind of maintain it. And then from there, it's kind of a back and forth, right? From the apprentice network to the employer. The employer is going to be there to provide insights to other employers, but then they're also going to help recruit and try to get new employers to be able to look at this apprentice network as an opportunity and a way to be able to grow in by again, reversing it, building momentum, talking about it, growing the model and really continuing the growth moving forward. And that's kind of how we see the apprentice network look. That's kind of our flow chart of, of how we describe it. We don't charge employers to be a part of the network. Um, I think that's one of the things that just I, even though I would love to take payment, but I don't, um, we, it's one of those things that we don't take any payment. It's one of the things that we want to still continue to see apprentice networks grow, um, being employer led, uh, and really continuing, you know, moving this model, uh, moving forward and creating an ecosystem, which I, is, you know, Matt Bruce sitting next to me is part of that ecosystem and is something that has helped made this more and more successful moving forward. Okay, hey, want to take a couple more questions before you kick it over to Matt? Yeah, that would be great. And then I do want to make sure we have enough time for Matt. So, yes, oh, that would be great. Yeah, we have a half an hour. Perfect. How, I don't know if you need that. Or you could, though. How yeah, does... Never. Okay. <laughs> how does doing apprenticeships affect... How has doing apprenticeships affected your employee development across your organization? I, you know, I think it's an added suite. I think it's one of the things that, you know, when we, we still hire from top, we still hire from, you know, four-year universities, Aon has a launch program. Um, we still do the same thing. I think it's just an added thing. And I think, you know, one of the things that we're looking at as a firm is looking across the country at different locations. We've seen that, you know, there's the same problem and same need in our other locations across the country. How do we being able to support that and really bring the Aon model and drop it into a different location? Um, because we've already developed it, we've already made it, um, but now it's kind of implementing the backing, the right community college partner, the right everything to tie it all in a bow. And I think one of the important things, again, it's not a sprint, it's a marathon. It's talking about jobs and a career and a new career pathway within an office and an organization. Education is key. You have to be able to educate but you also have to being able to take the time to make sure that's the way the, the ship runs to make it high quality and successful. Can, can I add to that? Yeah. To that? I, I've seen the, this Aon experience, and this is Matt Bruce, by the way. Um, I've seen this Aon experience affect Aon in jobs that are in the apprenticeship space. So we had a great conversation as we were learning more about the program and the company with the diversity and equity and inclusion yeah. folks over at Aon. And one of the things they've said is that now that they've had apprentices for a little bit of time now, especially ones they've had since the beginning, you know, that they have their associate's degree and they're looking at like, how do we keep these folks in the company? Cause we, we love this talent that we're developing and it gets them to look at, well, what's the next step of that person? And it used to be a step that someone would make having a bachelor's degree right. and now they don't, they have an associate's degree. So it's getting them to rethink other roles too, because that person might be ready to make that next step. And, but now you got to look at the requirements or what was originally on paper for this next step up for them, and it's getting them to, to think about a lot of things yeah. in, in the company. Yeah, and I think to add to Matt's point, right, we're not telling them that they shouldn't go get their bachelor's degree yeah. either, right? I, I think it's one of those things that if they want to, by all means, um, but it's not going to stop them from having a career path within our firm. Um, you're still going to have a career path to be able to grow up 
uh, with an associate's degree, you know, moving forward uh, within our firm. And, and that's the bottom line of it. One of our executives uh, came from community colleges, and that's just how he came from and came to work at Aon. And, you know, we see more and more of that. How do we continue to train the next, you know, person to be able to do that is kind of part of the part of the puzzle and part of the key. So um, another question, when you were approached about engaging in apprenticeships, what made you say yes? So I, I think from Aon's perspective, it was very common in the UK, as I said earlier. Um, my CEO, Greg Case, wanted to try to implement a program in the U.S., um, and that's kind of how we came about it. I think Zurich, you know, led the way, to tell you the truth. Not, I'm touting Zurich. Um, they're the ones that really started it here in Chicagoland. Um, and we are very appreciative of their support that kind of helped us get started um, and really bring that to fold. Um, and that's kind of how we got engaged based on how good of retention and everything else we were getting out of the UK program. We thought that would solve our problem, and it did. Um, it solved our retention problem, you know, long term. Okay. As we so we have these last two questions, and we can kick it over to Matt. So, are adults Perfect. and older are adults and older participants marketed to? And then the uh, other question is, who physically does the recruiting of students and apprentice applicants? Yeah. So we focus very much on 18 to 25. That was kind of our target market for cohort one. Um, you know, this actual next cohort, I think we're going to try to expand the reach a little bit more. You know, from some of our learnings, we have found that um, w someone a little older is not a bad thing. Um, and it's something that it could be a great ad, um, especially when we're talking about, um, you know, the opportunity of someone getting their associate's degree or being a part of that. Um, I think that's something that we're going to look to add. You know, other employers that are a part of the network um, hire from all age ranges um, and do it very differently. Um, but, you know, from our standpoint, we've, we, we started 18 to 25, but we're also, you know, going to continue to expand um, and look at different age ranges. And what was the last question? Sorry, Lisa. That's okay. It was about who does the recruiting. Yeah. So our HR team does. Um, so we actually have, we, this is part of the bucket of early careers. Um, and we have a person, her name is Kelsey. I don't know if she's on the line, but um, she does the recruitment um, at Aon. She meets with, she does resource center, the resource fair um, at some of the local community colleges. She's talked at high schools. Um, we do job fairs across the city um, and, and are engaged there, you know, through that time frame of like starting in August and ending in November. Um, and that's kind of the way we promote, you know, Accenture does it during the springtime. Um, McDonald does it, I think, in January. We'll see Rush do, or uh, Rush does it in January. Everybody does it in different times. Um, and, you know, it kind of depends on their budgeting, but also how they want the program to flow out. Um, and that's kind of how they look at it. All right. Very good. I think we're ready to kick it over to Matt. Right. Can I, can I do a little intro yeah, side absolutely. of it? So I think, yeah. So I actually think this is a very, very important part of this, right? Um, so Matt Bruce, who I'm at his spot at the Chicago Community Trust from Chicagoland Workforce Funder Alliance, um, has been a tremendous partner for us when we're thinking about growing this model and making it scalable. Um, so part of Matt, Matt's role has been a part of what is known as the Apprenticeship 2020, and I'll have him talk about it. But from us, it's creating this ecosystem of high quality um, and also making it where Players that are very interested in being engaged have a source and someone to go to, but also providing and helping provide infrastructure to the community college system uh, to being able to support this new way of work. Um, and I and you know I think this is something that helps the ecosystem grow, um, which in Chicago is a very important mix um, and is something that has you know helped tremendously. So Matt, I, I pitch it off to you. Sure. Uh, yeah, so I run an organization called the Chicago Land Workforce Funder Alliance, and we are we're hosted here at the Chicago Community Trust. Um, our work is to get foundations, philanthropy, corporate foundations to work together on workforce development. And I describe Apprenticeship 2020 as being a philanthropic companion to the Chicago Apprentice Network. 
Uh, so we're one of the funders of Apprenticeship 2020, and we also hold the, the pool fund uh, that many of the funder members use to, to support the overall effort. But it's really a collaboration of, of eight, uh, eight or so different foundations. So it's Pritzker Trauber Foundation, J.P. Morgan Chase's Foundation, Joyce, MacArthur, Salesforce.org, the trust itself. Um, the, the idea is that um, because there's this sort of singularity, this sort of singular opportunity with the Chicago Apprentice Network, you don't see this happen very often. That's part of why there's a webinar about it, because it's so um, compelling and interesting. Um, we wanted to make sure that the regional system, especially city colleges, had the capacity to respond to this opportunity. So because the corporate community led by Aonic Venture in Zurich um, was doing its part, even more than its part, sort of proselytizing to each other and supporting each other to adopt this model, that is, and we could see would be, uh, driving a lot of employers to city colleges. You can see that on the, on the flow chart here. That's city colleges where a lot of these employers end up if it's working. Um, and we wanted city colleges to have the capacity to be able to make the most out of that for them, them as an institution and for their students, of course. Um, and so, as you know, if you talk to city colleges about this, they saw this opportunity as well, of course, and they were going to do everything they could to respond to it. Uh, they were very happy with the long-standing relationship they, they've had with Accenture with Aon. They wanted to build on that. So, you know, it, it, we don't take responsibility for that. City Colleges was going to build its capacity. We helped them do it faster, maybe maybe do it better, be able to do as much in 2018 and 2019 and sort of, and sort of get it going. But part of what we also like about it is we have commitment from institutional partners like City Colleges that they're in this for the long run. They want to have the Office of Apprenticeship and Workforce Solutions for the long haul. They, they want to keep working with, with employers in this way. And it's that office, which are our grant to city colleges, that, that's what we helped to create. Um, so Apprenticeship 2020 is a, is a, is a pool fund. It's a, it's a shared philanthropic initiative. Uh, it's, we also include Aon and Accenture in the leadership of it. Um, they're not putting dollars in as philanthropic partners. They're there as, as representatives of the employer network, the employer leadership of this. Um, it's a $3.2 million fund over approximately two years. Uh, we're maybe half a year into it, depending where you start counting. Um, it's made, as I said, an investment in city colleges. We also have a grant with 1 million degrees. That is sort of trying to figure out, well, how does the student support part of this happen? How does that happen at scale? Um, 1 million degrees doesn't have to work with employers. The way they work with Aon, it doesn't have to be like that for every employer. There's other things. There's uh, ways to address the student support challenge. Uh, another important piece is the third-party evaluation. So we've contracted with the Aspen Institute to do a developmental evaluation in the beginning of this, sort of like a feedback loop with all the partners. So we see what's working, what's not working in, in, in real time, and we can correct as we go along. Um, a lot of this is new work. And so like, you know, uh, City Colleges has not had an Office of Apprenticeship. And so they think they know what they want to do with it. They've, they've had the experiences they've had. But with each employer coming in, they keep learning about, you know, how, how to do this better, how to do it quicker, how to be, how to be more efficient working with employers. Um, so that's what Apprenticeship 2020 is, is, is about. It's, uh, it's really still in, in early, early stages. Um, we want to see this as part of building the larger ecosystem to build out apprenticeship across the state. Um, so I've been involved uh, on and off with the apprenticeship subcommittee with, with the workforce board. Um, we think this, this, our investments really align with the investments that the state is making, for example, that DCO is making through the, through, through the NOFO they just did last year. Um, so we're trying to see how all these pieces uh, can fit together and build an apprenticeship system for, for the state. I mean, I'll stop there and take care. Yeah, questions. any questions? So there is one question. Will Apprenticeship 2020 expand beyond the Chicago Apprentice Network to the Illinois Apprenticeship Network? That is a good question. That, that is a good question. Um, <laughs> we have a leadership meeting next week. Uh, I, will, I, will, I will bring that up. Um, we, you know, we are certainly look at, like, how can, you know, what we're doing, you know, be, be shared uh, across the state and how can it um, uh, leverage or, like, co-invest with investments that, that um, DCO makes or that, that, that the state, say, of Illinois makes. 
Um, so yeah, that's a definite possibility. I, I don't have a firm yes or no. No, and I don't think no, we and, uh, yeah, and we'd have to talk about it too. But I think it's, it's something yeah. definitely to explore. Well, yeah, and I and just to add, right? I think it's a it's like again, it's it's not like tomorrow, right? This yeah. is something that takes time to build. That I think once the momentum is there, Lisa, as you know, as folks on the call, and we get more engaged and more going, this is the first of many conversations, right? And I think you know, as this grows and as this takes time. Um, we want to keep, you know, the partners and folks on the phone very much engaged yep. uh, and to keep the conversation going. You know, the more employers we can look to this as a, as a new model for them, the better. And, you know, I think once, you know, there's that opportunity for, you know, further investment and everything else, it, it will happen, but it just takes time. And it takes that momentum and the growth. And I think, you know, this is kind of the, the way that we did it in Chicago. This has been working. And we're going to continue to do it. We're going to get to a thousand. I, I, I'm getting to a thousand, and uh, we're going to continue to push and, and keep moving forward. And we'll see where it goes, and we'll see where the growth. And this is one of many calls and many partnership conversations we have, Lisa, over time. So I'm excited. Yeah, very much so. We are excited here too. So if there if there are any more questions, uh, we'll take a few right now. If not, uh, we want to thank everyone for their time. So we'll give just uh, the grants provided for process improvements for uh, that's a question that well, there's a question on grants providing for process improvements for the community college we'll have to get an answer back on that I'm not really sure unfortunately yeah and again, and again just to add Lisa my email is dan.sorota at aon.com if you yeah. have any questions on any of these slides we're going to look to send this out to folks probably tomorrow morning um, we'll format it a little bit better um, but in general, I'm around to help. If you have employers of interest, they need to hear it from an employer. I have an empl I, we have employers from mostly every single industry. I think it's important for employers to talk to other employers that are based on their industry. So I, I definitely think we're, we're here to help support and be engaged. Great. And Matt, not to put you on the spot, but would you mind giving your email address if anyone has questions on 2020? Sure. Yeah, I'll put it in the chat too, but it's um, mbruce at cct.org. Great. And I, I can, yeah, I can send people more information about A2020 if they want. Great. All right. Well, I want to thank you all for your time. I hope you have found this helpful and informative and look for more information from us on Illinois Apprentice Network. And Thanks for putting it together, Lisa. Great job. So thank you. Thanks, everyone. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.